Section 19 of a Collection of Supreme Court Opinions by the United States Supreme Court. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. West Virginia State Board of Education v. Barnett 319 U.S. 624, decided June 14, 1943. Please note, this is a reading of the opinion of the court only. This reading does not include the syllabus or any concurring or dissenting opinions. For ease of listening, this reading omits legal citations found within the text of the court's opinion. Mr. Justice Jackson delivered the opinion of the court. Following the decision of this court on June 3, 1940, in Minersville School District v. Gobitis, 310 U.S. 586, the West Virginia legislature amended its statutes to require all schools therein to conduct courses of instruction in history, civics, and in the constitutions of the United States and of the state, quote, for the purpose of teaching, fostering, and perpetuating the ideals, principles, and spirit of Americanism, and increasing the knowledge of the organization and machinery of the government, end quote. Appellant, Board of Education was directed, with advice of the State Superintendent of Schools, to, quote, prescribe the courses of study covering these subjects, end quote, for public schools. The Act made it a duty of private, parochial, and denominational schools to prescribe courses of study, quote, similar to those required for the public schools, end quote. Footnote. Section 134, West Virginia Code, 1941, Supplement. Quote, in all public, private, parochial, and denominational schools located within this state, there shall be given regular courses of instruction in history of the United States, in civics, and in the constitutions of the United States and of the state of West Virginia for the purpose of teaching, fostering, and perpetuating the ideals, principles, and spirit of Americanism, and increasing the knowledge of the organization and machinery of the government of the United States, and of the state of West Virginia. The State Board of Education shall, with the advice of the State Superintendent of Schools, prescribe the courses of study covering these subjects for the public elementary and grammar schools, public high schools, and state normal schools. It shall be the duty of the officials or boards having authority over the respective private, parochial, and denominational schools to prescribe courses of study for the schools under their control and supervision similar to those required for the public schools. End quote. End footnote. The Board of Education on January 9, 1942, adopted a resolution containing recitals taken largely from the court's gobitisk opinion and ordering that the salute to the flag become quote, a regular part of the program of activities in the public schools. End quote. That all teachers and pupils quote, shall be required to participate in the salute honoring the nation represented by the flag, provided, however, that refusal to salute the flag be regarded as an act of insubordination and shall be dealt with accordingly. End quote. The resolution originally required the commonly accepted salute to the flag, which it defined. Objections to the salute as being too much like Hitler's were raised by the Parent and Teachers Association, the Boy and Girl Scouts, the Red Cross, and the Federation of Women's Clubs. Footnote. The National Headquarters of the United States Flag Association takes the position that the extension of the right arm in this salute to the flag is not the Nazi fascist salute. Quote, 
although quite similar to it in the pledge to the flag the right arm is extended and raised palm upward whereas the nazis extend the arm practically straight to the front the finger tips being about even with the eyes palm downward and the fascists do the same except they raise the arm slightly higher end of quote james a moss the flag of the united states its history and symbolism nineteen fourteen page one hundred and eight end of footnote some modifications appears to have been made in deference to these objections but no concession was made to jehovah's witnesses footnote they have offered in lieu of participating in the flag salute ceremony quote, periodically and publicly end quote, to give the following pledge quote, i have pledged my unqualified allegiance and devotion to jehovah the almighty god and to his kingdom for which jesus commands all christians to pray i respect the flag of the united states and acknowledge it as a symbol of freedom and justice to all i pledge allegiance and obedience to all the laws of the united states that are consistent with god's law as set forth in the bible End quote. End of footnote. what is now required is the stiff arm salute the saluter to keep the right hand raised with palm turned up while the following is repeated quote, i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all End quote. failure to conform is insubordination dealt with by expulsion readmission is denied by statute until compliance meanwhile the expelled child is unlawfully absent and may be proceeded against as a delinquent his parents or guardians are liable to prosecution and if convicted are subject to fine not exceeding fifty dollars and jail term not exceeding thirty days appellees citizens of the united states and of west virginia brought suit in the united states district court for themselves and others similarly situated asking its injunction to restrain enforcement of these laws and regulations against jehovah's witnesses the witnesses are an unincorporated body teaching that the obligation imposed by law of god is superior to that of laws enacted by temporal governments their religious beliefs include a literal version of exodus chapter twenty verses four and five which says quote, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image nor any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them End quote they consider that the flag is an image within this command for this reason they refuse to salute it children of this faith have been expelled from school and are threatened with exclusion for no other cause officials threaten to send them to reformatories maintained for criminally inclined juveniles parents of such children have been prosecuted and are threatened with prosecutions for causing delinquency the board of education moved to dismiss the complaint setting forth these facts and alleging that the law and regulations are an unconstitutional denial of religious freedom and of freedom of speech and are invalid under the due process and equal protection clauses of the fourteenth amendment of the federal constitution the cause was submitted to the pleadings of a district court of three judges it restrained enforcement as to the plaintiffs and those of that class the board of education brought the case here by direct appeal this case calls upon us to consider a precedent decision as the court throughout its history often has been required to do before returning to the gobitus case however it is desirable to notice certain characteristics by which this controversy is distinguished 
the freedom asserted by these appellees does not bring them into collision with rights asserted by any other individual it is such conflicts which most frequently require intervention of the state to determine where the rights of one end and those of another begin but the refusal of these persons to participate in the ceremony does not interfere with or deny rights of others to do so nor is there any question in this case that their behavior is peaceable and orderly the sole conflict is between authority and rights of the individual the state asserts power to condition access to public education on making a prescribed sign and profession and at the same time to coerce attendance by punishing both parent and child the latter stand on a right of self-determination in matters that touch individual opinion and personal attitude as the chief justice said in dissent in the gobitis case the state may quote, require teaching by instruction and study of all in our history and in the structure and organization of our government including the guarantees of civil liberty which tend to inspire patriotism and a love of country End quote. here however we are dealing with a compulsion of students to declare a belief they are not merely made acquainted with the flag salute so that they may be informed as to what it is or even what it means the issue here is whether this slow and easily neglected route to arouse loyalties constitutionally may be short cut by substituting a compulsory salute and slogan this issue is not prejudiced by the court's previous holding that where a state without compelling attendance extends college facilities to pupils who voluntarily enroll it may prescribe military training as part of the course without offense to the constitution it was held that those who take advantage of its opportunity may not on ground of conscience refuse compliance with such conditions hamilton v regents in the present case attendance is not optional that case is also to be distinguished from the present one because independently of college privileges or requirements the state has power to raise militia and impose the duties of service therein upon its citizens there is no doubt that in connection with the pledges the flag salute is a form of utterance symbolism is a primitive but effective way of communicating ideas the use of an emblem or flag to symbolize some system idea institution or personality is a short cut from mind to mind causes and nations political parties lodges and ecclesiastical groups seek to knit the loyalty of their followers to a flag or banner a color or design the state announces rank function and authority through crowns and maces uniforms and black robes the church speaks through the cross the crucifix the altar and shrine and clerical raiment symbols of state often convey political ideas just as religious symbols come to convey theological ones associated with many of these symbols are appropriate gestures of acceptance or respect a salute a bowed or bared head a bended knee a person gets from a symbol the meaning he puts into it and what is one man's comfort and inspiration is another's jest and scorn over a decade ago chief justice hughes led this court in holding that the display of a red flag as a symbol of opposition by peaceful and legal means to organized government was protected by the free speech guarantees of the constitution stromberg v california here it is the state that employs a flag as a symbol of adherence to government as presently organized it requires the individual to communicate by word and sign his acceptance of the political ideas it thus bespeaks objection to this form of communication when coerced is an old one well known to the framers of the bill of rights 
Footnote. Early Christians were frequently persecuted for their refusal to participate in ceremonies before the statue of the emperor or other symbol of imperial authority. The story of William Tell's sentence to shoot an apple off his son's head for refusal to salute a bailiff's hat is an ancient one. The Quakers, William Penn included, suffered punishment rather than uncover their heads in deference to any civil authority. And footnote. It is also to be noted that the compulsory flag salute and pledge requires affirmation of a belief and an attitude of mind. It is not clear whether the regulation contemplates that pupils forego any contrary convictions of their own and become unwilling converts to the prescribed ceremony, or whether it will be acceptable if they simulate assent by words without belief or by a gesture barren of meaning. It is now commonplace that censorship or suppression of expression of opinion is tolerated by our Constitution only when the expression presents a clear and present danger of action of a kind the state is empowered to prevent and punish it would seem that involuntary affirmation could be commanded only on even more immediate and urgent grounds than silence but here the power of compulsion is invoked without any allegation that remaining passive during a flag salute ritual creates a clear and present danger that would justify an effort even to muffle expression. To sustain the compulsory flag salute, we are required to say that a Bill of Rights which guards the individual's right to speak his own mind, left it open to public authorities to compel him to utter what is not in his mind. Whether the First Amendment to the Constitution will permit officials to order observance of ritual of this nature does not depend upon whether, as a voluntary exercise, we would think it to be good, bad, or merely innocuous. Any credo of nationalism is likely to include what some disapprove of or omit, what others think essential and to give off different overtones as it takes on different accents or interpretations. If official power exists to coerce acceptance of any patriotic creed, what it shall contain cannot be decided by courts, but must be largely discretionary with the ordaining authority, whose power to prescribe would no doubt include power to amend. Hence, validity of the asserted power to force an American citizen publicly to profess any statement of belief or engage in any ceremony of assent to one presents questions of power that must be considered independently of any idea we may have as to the utility of the ceremony in question. Nor does the issue, as we see it, turn on one's possession of particular religious views or the sincerity with which they are held while religion supplies appelli's motive for enduring the discomforts of making the issue in this case many citizens who do not share these religious views hold such a compulsory right to infringe constitutional liberty of the individual footnote Cushman Constitutional Law in 1939-1940-35 American Political Science Review, pages 250 and 271, observes, quote, All of the eloquence by which the majority extol the ceremony of flag saluting as a free expression of patriotism turned sour when used to describe the brutal compulsion which requires a sensitive and conscientious child to stultify himself in public. End quote. End footnote. It is not necessary to inquire whether nonconformist beliefs will exempt from the duty to salute unless we first find power to make the salute a legal duty. The Gopetis decision, however, assumed as did the argument in that case and in this, that power exists in the state to impose the flag salute discipline upon school children in general. 
the court only examined and rejected a claim based on religious beliefs of immunity from an unquestioned general rule the question which underlies the flag salute controversy is whether such a ceremony so touching matters of opinion and political attitude may be imposed upon the individual by official authority under powers committed to any political organization under our constitution we examine rather than assume existence of this power and against this broader definition of issues in this case re-examine specific grounds assigned for the gobitus decision one it was said that the flag salute controversy confronted the court with quote, the problem which lincoln cast in memorable dilemma quote, must a government of necessity be too strong for the liberties of its people or too weak to maintain its own existence End quote and that the answer must be in favor of strength minersville school district v gobitis supra at five ninety six we think these issues may be examined free of pressure or restraint growing out of such considerations it may be doubted whether mr lincoln would have thought that the strength of government to maintain itself would be impressively vindicated by our confirming power of the state to expel a handful of children from school such oversimplification so handy in political debate often lacks the precision necessary to postulates of judicial reasoning if validly applied to this problem the utterance cited would resolve every issue of power in favor of those in authority and would require us to override every liberty thought to weaken or delay execution of their policies government of limited power need not be anemic government assurance that rights are secure tends to diminish fear and jealousy of strong government and by making us feel safe to live under it makes for its better support without promise of a limiting bill of rights it is doubtful if our constitution could have mustered enough strength to enable its ratification to enforce those rights today is not to choose weak government over strong government it is only to adhere as a means of strength to individual freedom of mind in preference to officially disciplined uniformity for which history indicates a disappointing and disastrous end the subject now before us exemplifies this principle free public education if faithful to the ideal of secular instruction and political neutrality will not be partisan or enemy of any class creed party or faction if it is to impose any ideological discipline however each party or denomination must seek to control or failing that to weaken the influence of the educational system observance of the limitations of the constitution will not weaken government in the field appropriate for its exercise two it was also considered in the gobitus case that functions of educational officers in states counties and school districts were such that to interfere with their authority would in effect make us the school board for the country the fourteenth amendment as now applied to the states protects the citizens against the state itself and all of its creatures boards of education not accepted these have of course important delicate and highly discretionary functions but none that they may not perform within the limits of the bill of rights that they are educating the young for citizenship is reason for scrupulous protection of constitutional freedoms of the individual if we are not to strangle the free mind at its source and teach youth to discount important principles of our government as mere platitudes such boards are numerous and their territorial jurisdiction often small 
but small and local authority may feel less sense of responsibility to the constitution and agencies of publicity may be less vigilant in calling it to account the action of congress in making flag observance voluntary and respecting the conscience of the objector in a matter so vital as raising the army contrasts sharply with these local regulations in matters relatively trivial to the welfare of the nation there are village tyrants as well as village hamptons but none who acts under color of law is beyond reach of the constitution three the gobitus opinion reasoned that this is a field where courts possess no marked and certainly no controlling competence that it is committed to the legislatures as well as the courts to guard cherished liberties and that it is constitutionally appropriate to quote, fight out the wise use of legislative authority in the forum of public opinion and before legislative assemblies rather than to transfer such a contest to the judicial arena End quote since all the effective means of inducing political changes are left free the very purpose of the bill of rights was to withdraw certain subjects from the vicissitudes of political controversy to place them beyond the reach of majorities and officials and to establish them as legal principles to be applied by the courts one's right to life liberty and property to free speech a free press freedom of worship and assembly and other fundamental rights may not be submitted to vote they depend on the outcome of no elections in weighing arguments of the parties it is important to distinguish between the due process clause of the fourteenth amendment as an instrument for transmitting the principles of the first amendment and those cases in which it is applied for its own sake the test of legislation which collides with the fourteenth amendment because it also collides with the principles of the first is much more definite than the test when only the fourteenth is involved much of the vagueness of the due process clause disappears when the specific prohibitions of the first become its standard the right of a state to regulate for example a public utility may well include so far as the due process test is concerned power to impose all the restrictions which a legislature may have a rational basis for adopting but freedoms of speech and of press of assembly and of worship may not be infringed on such slender grounds they are susceptible of restriction only to prevent grave and immediate danger to interests which the state may lawfully protect it is important to note that while it is the fourteenth amendment which bears directly upon the state it is the more specific limiting principles of the first amendment that finally govern this case nor does our duty to apply the bill of rights to assertions of official authority depend upon our possession of marked competence in the field where the invasion of rights occurs true the task of translating the majestic generalities of the bill of rights conceived as part of the pattern of liberal government in the eighteenth century into concrete restraints on officials dealing with the problems of the twentieth century is one to disturb self-confidence these principles grew in soil which also produced a philosophy that the individual was the centre of society that his liberty was attainable through mere absence of governmental restraints and that government should be entrusted with few controls and only the mildest supervision over men's affairs we must transplant these rights to the soil in which the lazy fair concept or principle of non-interference has withered at least as to economic affairs and social advancements are increasingly sought through closer integration of society and through expanded and strengthened governmental controls 
these changed conditions often deprive precedents of reliability and cast us more than we would choose upon our own judgment but we act in these matters not by authority of our competence but by force of our commissions we cannot because of modest estimates of our competence in such specialties as public education withhold the judgment that history authenticates as the function of this court when liberty is infringed for lastly this is the very heart of the gobitus opinion it reasons that quote, national unity is the basis of national security end quote that the authorities have quote, the right to select appropriate means for its attainment end quote and hence reaches the conclusion that such compulsory measures toward national unity are constitutional upon the verity of this assumption depends our answer in this case national unity as an end with officials may foster by persuasion and example is not in question the problem is whether under our constitution compulsion as here employed is a permissible means for its achievement struggles to coerce uniformity of sentiment in support of some end thought essential to their time and country have been waged by many good as well as by evil men nationalism is a relatively recent phenomenon but at other times and places the ends have been racial or territorial security support of a dynasty or regime and particular plans for saving souls as first and moderate methods to attain unity have failed those bent on its accomplishment must resort to an ever-increasing severity as governmental pressure toward unity becomes greater so strife becomes more bitter as to whose unity it shall be probably no deeper division of our people could proceed from any provocation than from finding it necessary to choose what doctrine and whose program public educational officials should compel youth to unite in embracing ultimate futility of such attempts to compel coherence is the lesson of every such effort from the roman drive to stamp out christianity as a disturber of its pagan unity the inquisition as a means to religious and dynastic unity the siberian exiles as a means to russian unity down to the fast failing efforts of our present totalitarian enemies those who begin coercive elimination of dissent soon find themselves exterminating dissenters compulsory unification of opinion achieves only the unanimity of the graveyard it seems trite but necessary to say that the first amendment of our constitution was designed to avoid these ends by avoiding these beginnings there is no mysticism in the american concept of the state or of its nature or origin of its authority we have set up government by consent of the governed and the bill of rights denies those in power any legal opportunity to coerce that consent authority here is to be controlled by public opinion not public opinion by authority the case is made difficult not because the principles of its decision are obscure but because the flag involved is our own nevertheless we apply the limitations of the constitution with no fear that freedom to be intellectually and spiritually diverse or even contrary will disintegrate the social organization to believe that patriotism will not flourish if patriotic ceremonies are voluntary and spontaneous instead of a compulsory routine is to make an unflattering estimate of the appeal of our institutions to free minds we can have intellectual individualism and the rich cultural diversities that we owe to exceptional minds only at the price of occasional eccentricity and abnormal attitudes when they are so harmless to others or to the state as those we deal with here the price is not too great 
but freedom to differ is not limited to things that do not matter much that would be a mere shadow of freedom the test of its substance is the right to differ as to things that touch the heart of the existing order if there is any fixed star in our constitutional constellation it is that no official high or petty can prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics nationalism religion or any other matter of opinion or for citizens to confess by word or act their faith therein if there are any circumstances which permit an exception they do not now occur to us we think the action of the local authorities in compelling the flag salute and pledge transcends constitutional limitations on their power and invades the sphere of intellect and spirit which it is the purpose of the first amendment of our constitution to reserve from all official control the decision of this court in minersville school district v gobitis and the holdings of those few per curiam decisions which preceded and foreshadowed it are overruled and the judgment enjoining enforcement of the west virginia regulation is affirmed end of section nineteen